Okay, um, I thought I'd show you uh, uh, one of the first boards um, I've been looking at. So these are small little boards like I kind of explained in the other video um, and they're going to be on uh, one board that I have manufactured. Then I'll cut these out with a bandsaw so I'll have a bunch of uh, a bunch of small boards and um, the upper left one here is going to be a program counter and then there'll be some RAM and then down here there'll be a register um, and uh, then these in the upper right are going to be uh, status LEDs or, or uh, LEDs that are 8-bit wide and allow you to look at uh, the, the lines while they're executing. And I have two designs here. I have uh, just uh, some 0603 um, LEDs and resistors and they're all connected to ground uh, so a high level on the pin will well, the LED will be on. I also um, uh, picked up some small little um, resistor arrays I found at the flea market. I got a, a reel of 5,000 of them for a dollar. Uh, so they're 1K uh, resistors all in a little package. Um, I've never tried those in my surface mount oven. So it'll be, this is kind of a test just to see if I like these or not. Um, I know I know these will work fine. Um, I can certainly um, do uh, 0603s. Um, 0402s don't work very well in, in my setup. Um, so this is basically the smallest I can go. So um, yeah, we'll give these a try, see if I like them or not, and get my dollar's worth. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at the uh, at the schematic for this just for a second. All right, so let's take a look at some of these. Um, look at the uh, program counter. Um, it's going to be some 74163 chips. Um, and you know, before I even talk about this design, let me let me sort of talk about um, the, the architecture, um, what I'm trying to do, and why I'm doing it. Obviously, a lot of other people have done things like this before. I see a lot of four-bit designs online and I was never too excited about a 4-bit uh, CPU so I want to do an 8-bit CPU so mine's going to be a total 8-bit design uh, and I'm going to have a real ALU in it also um, something like a, a 74161 I don't particularly like that chip so I'm going to use something different um, but it's all going to be an 8-bit design and um, it will allow me to address 256 bytes of RAM, so I should be able to write a longer program, and I'll be able to do things in 8-bit, and add and subtract, and do things like that. Um, so it'll be a real 8-bit eight, eight design. Um, I might expand it to 16 bits later, but for now it's going to all be just 8 bits. And the uh, data bus is going to be an 8-bit data bus. So this is going to be my data bus design. It's going to be VCC and ground on the outsides and then the eight data lines inside. And these lines will basically be on uh, like you could just use a strip board, uh, a proto strip board. Um, and all you have to do is make sure that whenever you plug one of these little cards in, that, that you just plug them onto the same eight data lines. So, you know, this is, would be the program counter would, would, it would hang onto that. Uh, here's another one. This would be uh, RAM, um, and this is a register. I'm sorry, this is a register, um, and and this is where the register would hook on. Uh, the program counter would be the same way. Uh, right here is where the program counter would hang on. So everybody just kind of hangs on to this 8-bit data line, 8-bit eight, uh, eight data bus, and um, that will allow me my modular design. These are basically the Legos, right? So. As long as you have a Lego that has this type of connector, you can just keep plugging them on the bus and then everybody will get along just fine. And there's gonna be a bunch of data lines, or not data lines, but um, control lines that are gonna be have to be kind of be wired in separately somehow, either just point to point haywiring or some other way. So like this particular device has three lines that need to come from someplace else, a RAM read signal, a RAM write signal, and a RAM address write signal. So. Um, uh, the program counter would have uh, four of them, program counter increment, write, read, and clear. Um, 
Registers are pretty simple. Registers would just have a, a, write, a write signal and a read signal. Um, but you can see, uh, once I have one register, I can have multiple registers. So if I want to have two registers, three registers, four registers, I can just keep adding them to the data bus. Um, and then whenever I want to examine something, I can just stick on one of these little LED indicators and I can see what I'm doing. So like on this address uh, uh, register, um, it's a little more complicated than it needs to be. And that's because I want to have access to the internal uh, state. And I have another connector here, which is uh, going to have one of these LEDs hanging onto it. So I can see this is just a D-type latch, octal latch. I'll be able to see the... Uh, the value that's stored in here. And then if you need to get the data out, then you would uh, enable this tri-state buffer and the data would come back out to the bus. So it's just, just having two chips instead of, you could do this all in one chip, but having two chips would allow you to uh, be able to look at what's going on. All right, so that's, uh, that's one portion of it. Um, let me show you another board. Here's a, uh, a board that I've actually sent out for manufacturing. So we're waiting waiting for that in the mail. It's uh, similar to the other board that you already saw. I just laid it out a little more efficiently. And um, you can see that I have some steps in the board here. So I don't have to cut those out on the bandsaw. They're already done for me. Um, and all I have to do is cut where these wide, uh, wide lines are. So again, it's the program counter, the RAM, uh, the LED indicators, uh, a register, and another register. Since I know I'm going to use lots of registers, I went ahead and copied this. And so for every board, I'll get two registers, and I'll get three indicators, and I'll get a program counter and RAM. So this is the first board that's going to come in. And so we'll be able to test to see if this thing's going to work. We could have multiple registers on the data, line, data bus. Uh, we can try out our program counter on the data bus, we'll try out RAM on the data bus. Um, so um, this is the first one. And um, let me sort of show you what I'm thinking of how this is going to work. You can see this is a three-dimensional design. Um, the back plane will be on the bottom, and that'll just be like a strip board. And let's say that I've got two registers. I'll, I'll put those two registers on. And then you can see that the uh, left connector here is the connector that will connect to the bottom. It will go down to the um, motherboard. Um, and this is the internal one. So one of these LEDs will piggyback on top of this board. So it'll be a three-dimensional. There'll be three boards stacked on top of one another. There'll be the motherboard, and there'll be the register, and then there'll be the little um, LED on top. Now let's say that I want to build an ALU. An ALU takes one register and adds it or subtracts it or adds or adds it from another register. So it needs two registers and then it needs an ALU unit. So I'm gonna be able to take two registers, put those on the bus, and then these internal uh, lines are the actual values of the registers. So I'll have a, uh, another card that will piggyback on top of this one which will be the ALU unit, and it will hang on these two connectors. And then it will hang off these two boards and be able to connect back down to the um, perf board, um, maybe hanging off the right-hand edge here. So I'll, I'll kind of show you some some cutouts and, 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 and how that works and what my thinking is, but that's sort of where I'm headed. Here's a second card, and this one is in, in uh, progress. I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. Um, the section over here on the left is the ALU. Um, it will piggyback on top of two register cards. So one register card will send its values here. So this will be, say, register A. And then one will send its values here, register B. So this will be piggybacked on top of those two boards. And then the output of the ALU will be this connector here. And that will reach down to the um, data bus. And so it's going to be using uh, two um, ALU uh, devices. These are 74LS361s uh, or 362s, depending on how you want the uh, carry bits to work. And um, yeah, so this will be um, another card. And then this is a work in progress, obviously. Uh, this is my state machine. 
um, trying to figure out exactly how I, how I want to design this. And um, let me show you the schematic for these two things, even though they're a bit messy. So here's the bus coming in. And uh, the data bus is only connected to the output of the ALU. Uh, so this is a tri-step buffer um, that allows the value of the ALU to be put on the bus. Um, like I said, the A register and the B register are going to be taken off piggyback way uh, off of those two cards. So register A comes in here, register B comes in here. Uh, so this is the register A bus, this is the register B bus. Uh, they don't look like they're drawn right. Anyway, um, no, I guess they are. I guess they are because these are both four bit. So this is a Alice uh, 382 and a 381. Um, so this is four bits of the ALU and the other four bits of the ALU with a carry ahead. Um, so um, the ALUs uh, require an, a carry in bit, um, then some. Uh, you, there's eight different ways to configure whether you're doing an AND, an OR, exclusive OR, uh, clear, set, uh, add, subtract, all those things. There's eight different ways to that you can configure the, uh, the 382. I'll show you that some, sometime in the future. And then the ALU read uh, puts the data on the bus. Um, the other part of the circuit that you saw was this. This is uh, sort of my version of a state machine, um, uh, the instruction machine. So there'll be a register that's the instruction register. So that will go on the bus. This is uh, the bus. Obviously, it's not quite right yet. It needs to have the same footprint as the, uh, the other ones. Um, but it'll it'll grab the eight bits and put it into um, the um, EEPROM, which will have the microcode. Um, there'll be a counter that will uh, count through the microcode. So there's a um, uh, 16 uh, count, a uh, four-bit counter here. So it will allow me to have uh, microcode up to 16 clock cycles. And then the output of the um, uh, PROM is the microcode. And uh, that will basically be uh, two groups of four. So when you're doing these CPUs, you're basically choosing a FROM and a TO. And you're going to put something on the bus and you're going to read something from the bus. So there is a FROM. Uh, uh, enable and there's a to enable and so um, this one selects the from so they're going to be 16 different froms and this is the two there'll be 16 different two so you could say okay well, i want a ram read and i'm going to put that into uh, register b and that's the right so um, this just i think allows more pins um, i could go ahead and like everybody else does duplicate the e eprom and have two of them um, it just seemed a bit cleaner this way. I'm kind of see if I can get away with this. It's obviously easy to do the other way, just have more and more EEPROMs. Um, but I think this is probably sufficient. Um, I'm going to try to do this and we'll see how we can succeed. Now, the nice thing about this is, see, my, my um, instruction part of the machine is a single board. And so if it doesn't work, I'll just design another one and, and then just swap them out. So again, it's this Lego design. I can just pop things pop things in and out. Here's something that I'm thinking about adding uh, is a, um, a test section. Uh, this is a, a, an 85, a 7485, which basically can tell if something is less than, equal to, or greater than. Um, and I, I thought I would add this to the ALU. And so I would, in addition to having the mathematical and, and logic operations of the ALU, I'd also have some flags. I would have a less than flag, a zero flag, and a greater than flag. And I thought that would be valuable. Um, it does take up a little real estate, but um, maybe I can add this as a separate card too, that piggybacks someplace. And you can add this if you want or not. But right now it's just a placeholder. Um, think, still thinking about it. All right. So the next step would be, let, let me show you kind of in... Um, mechanically how this thing's all gonna all gonna go together.